Hi there, and welcome to Hyundai Power Products. My name is Adrian, and today we're going to be looking at the HY3200 SEI Inverter Generator. So I've laid the contents of the packaging out on the table for you to see. First of all, we have the generator itself. We have a convenient oil filler bottle for filling the engine oil. We shall go into that. A spark plug spanner and handle. The external battery leads for charging external batteries. Double-ended screwdriver two keys and two remote control key fobs and finally we have the user manual now I do recommend that you read the user manual thoroughly before use that's the contents of your packaging so the first thing we're going to do is to put engine oil in the engine now you can use a 15W40 grade or this SAE30 petrol engine oil now this particular oil is recommended by Hyundai Power Products so this SAE30 engine oil is the one I'm going to be using and this oil is readily available from our parts department. So the oil filler is located behind this flap on the right hand side of the machine from the control panel end. So using the Phillips screwdriver provided, we'll undo these two screws and remove the little access hatch. That's the two screws undone and we can simply pull the little access hatch away which reveals the oil filler here. So as you'd expect, we need to remove the little plug so I can simply turn it anti-clockwise and unscrew it to remove it. And there we are, that's the filler plug removed. So as you can see, with it being inboard the machine and quite a way in from the cover here, is why we supply you with a little filler bottle. So you can put the end of the filler bottle in and pour engine oil into the engine. I won't use this particular one, I've got a larger one as I'm regularly using larger quantities of oil. So I'll put the end of the spout in, exactly as you would do with a small bottle, and start filling the engine oil gradually. So I'll put some engine oil in. just have a check as to the oil level. So the oil level I'm looking for is for the engine oil to come up to the weir point of this hole so that you can't get any more in without it pouring back over the lip. So as you can see from this I need to put some more oil in it. So as you can see the oil level is right up to this point here, the weir point of the hole and that is absolutely perfect so now we can refit the plug. Okay to refit the plug back into the hole doing it up clockwise this time screw it down firmly into place if you do have a little bit of spillage you can clean it up with some paper towel in here before refitting the access cover so now that we've filled the oil I can refit the access cover into the two lugs in the bottom first just line up the two screws with their respective holes And screw the cover firmly back into place. So moving on we need to put fuel in the generator. So the fuel filler is here on the top and again it unscrews anti-clockwise and you can pull the retained cap away. So using fresh unleaded petrol I'm going to put a few litres of petrol in it for the purposes of the demonstration. So when fueling your machine always switch it off and always fuel it out in the open air away from sources of ignition there we are so I shall put another one litre jug full in there to get it going so having put a couple of litres of fuel in the fuel tank I can replace the cap and do it up by turning it clockwise firmly until it stops and that's the fuel filled so moving on we need to connect the battery so the battery is located behind this front cover here underneath the control panel and again we can undo the two screws one either side it's that one and the other one simply pull the cover away which reveals the battery now the battery connections are here so to connect the battery you will see these two plastic plugs 
with a male and a female. We have a barb on this one and a hole in this one. So we can simply connect them up. Let me get them into view for you. Push them together until they click. And that's the battery connected. So we can now tuck the cable back in and replace the cover. Okay, one screw inside, back in turning clockwise, get them both started, and then screw them firmly home into position, and that's the battery connected. So let's have a look at a few of the controls on your machine. So here we have the fuel tap, the arrow pointing up here is the on, down here for off, we're going to need it in the on position. If you're storing or transporting a generator, I'd always recommend turning the fuel switch to off. Okay, so here we have the eco switch with the hay and the tortoise. Obviously the hay position lets the engine run at its standard speed. If you push it across to the tortoise position, it will drop the engine, engine speed, saving you fuel, which is ideal when you've got very light loads. If you're going to apply a larger load, you need to turn it into the hair position, ready to accept the larger load. So here we have the ignition switch, very much like a car ignition switch. We put the keys in. That would be the run position when the engine is running. And you would also need to put it in this position to use the remote key fobs. And then finally... As you saw when I turned it to the start position, just like a car switch, the engine started. Okay, here we have the two 230 volt outlets, 13 amp standard UK sockets. And here we have the two terminals for the 12 volt external battery connection and its reset switch. This will only pop out if you overload the 12 volt outlet. So if you do overload it, remove whatever it was that overloaded the system and push the reset button. So we have a set of three lights here on the display. The first one is the low oil light, the furthest on the left. If this comes on, it will shut off the engine to protect itself. And it pretty much means that you need to service the generator or top up the oil. The central light is the overload light. As you approach the maximum capacity of the generator, this will start to flash. If you exceed it, this light will come on permanently, and again, it will stop the output to the two sockets. This can be reset without switching the engine off, but you would need to remove the excessive load, and then push this reset button here to reset the system, and the generator will come back to a green light here on the AC light, and the load will be reapplied onto the sockets. The final button on the control panel is this one here, which is the scroll button, which will scroll through the display settings from the engine RPM, the amount of hours that the generator has been run, and the volts and hertz output reading. So the final control is the manual restart here on the side of the generator. Should you have a flat battery, you can still start it manually. So you would hold the recoil handle, pull it out until you feel resistance, which is there, and then pull the recoil and start as normal with the key in the run position. So just to demonstrate the starting procedure, you turn the fuel tap on and then with no load applied, you may have an extension lead or what have you if you're using the remote, but make sure that the appliances on the other end of the leads is switched off first, then you can start the generator. So you've seen me manually start it by turning to start for a remote start, you would turn it to the run remote. And then using the remote, press and hold the on button. And then switch off. So to recap, remove any load, you can leave the plugs in, 
if you're going to be using the remote, start the generator up and then apply the load to the machine. And to switch off, remove any load, then switch the generator off. And when you're finished with it, turn the key to the stop position so as not to drain the battery. To demonstrate the pole start, again, fuel switch on, ignition key in the run remote position, and then we can pull start the generator. Well, I do hope you found this demonstration useful. I've been Adrian, and thank you for watching.